Good morning, guys. Uh, glad to have you on with us this morning uh, in person, and maybe uh, also a few people will be able to watch this back later and uh, be blessed uh, through through that. Um, well, so we thank you for being on. Uh, this is our Promise Keepers Saturday morning Zoom group for our Bible study that we try to carry out in the app um, as best we can on a daily basis. Um, I know it's been a struggle um, lately, but there are people working on it, trying to fix it, and hopefully very soon we'll get back to a stable um, a stable app that we can all communicate in, go into our groups, and um, you know stay connected a little better, as well as have access to um, all the great resources that are in there. They're still in there. Um, so uh, with that, I'm going to pray us in. Heavenly Father, Abba, we come to you, Lord God Almighty, just in all of everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord. Each and every breath that we take is a miracle that we can share, Lord, when we, um, we have... Um, family members uh, who are seeking you, finding you, experiencing you. Uh, Lord, it just warms our hearts. And um, so we thank you for, for all the men uh, around this country, around this world that are finding you, Lord, and experiencing you uh, through whatever movement, whatever um, thing that you're doing in their hearts. But Lord, we pray that that continues and that those little flames uh, will spark and uh, be fueled by your Holy Spirit so that they uh, reach and touch those around them and we're able to spread your Holy Spirit across this land. Uh, Lord, this morning, I specifically raise up um, Chuck and good praise reports and uh, we, we pray, raise up Rachel uh, as well and Lord we just ask that you take this short amount of time that we have together each week uh, and especially this week Lord and uh, just multiply your Holy Spirit through it and so that we go out into the rest of this world and uh, be more like you as we learn to together more about you, instill more of you uh, in our hearts until it overflows to those around us. And we thank you, Lord, for all those opportunities that you give us, the direction and the favor that we get in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Um, so. So. Uh, we started um, a book of daily devotionals, and I wanted to say, um, if you can't get in the app, hopefully you can go to um, www.archive.org, I believe it is, and it's an internet archive, and you can check out, you can check the book out on a daily basis. Um for up well you can check it out for up to an hour you can check it out multiple times for many hours in the week uh, if you need to but um each of these devotionals probably to read them takes you know five minutes at most each day and uh, i hope you can get something out of them through that uh, even if you can't get into the app and read i'm trying to post um most of these in the app, um, and I I didn't get to post Friday, Saturdays until uh, for this week until um, late last night because of um, you know a, a festival that I was going to and it just took up most of my day driving there and and going to it. So, um, and since Tim has um, you know. A family praise report. Um, 
and some other things that we prayed about for um, his family. I pray that we all have um, good news in our families always, but sometimes uh, we need a little extra prayer, um, a little extra hallelujah too, or, you know, praise the Lord for what he's doing. And uh, so maybe we'll just go back and start with week one and we'll work and see how, how this goes since we haven't done it before. I don't know how it's going to go, um, but well, I'm not going to read the, well, hmm. I, I'll read parts parts of it, I guess, because then it would be hard to, to not, to, to be able to talk about it if you're not able to get to it in the app, but uh, just to experience it. And so um, the book itself has, I think, 52 weeks of worth of uh, daily devotionals. Each week is on a particular theme, and the themes go along with the, the promises, uh, the seven promises of a promise keeper. And um, so this first one that we were, we had to skip from last week was on family. And so the Monday uh, was titled Reading My Wife's Face. Uh, key verse here in this case is Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Uh, there's extra um there's there's usually extra bible verses provided um so if somebody would like to look up first peter 3 7 and uh, someone else maybe proverbs 15 13 uh if we if we just want to read those extra verses um sometime during the day then we'll do this morning we'll do that so i'm going to try to get through the week um and so I'll read through these. We'll take a cut. We'll <clears throat> try to go through some of the questions that come out of each each day, and then there's a couple questions and thoughts um, to bring up for each of the for, for each week. Um, so, again, title: Reading My Wife's Face, and the key verse is Ephesians five twenty five through twenty seven, and the key verse for all these are written in the the text. Uh, and so I'm just going to read whatever version is in the text uh, for this. But uh, you guys can read whatever version you have there in front of you or uh, and, and certainly for these extra bonus reading uh, verses. So husbands, we're pretty all familiar, familiar with this one, I think. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the, ch the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy without and then dot 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 without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless so again it probably didn't, it doesn't have the whole complete verse there but the parts that pertain to this particular devotion so the text is not long ago god showed me that I had that I'd been blind to the pain of my wife Lindy. Uh, this is uh, Coach uh, Bill McCartney's um, devotional, and uh, his wife is Lindy. Um, it's a humbling admission. Uh, imagine the founder of a men's movement dedicated to honoring Jesus and family didn't have his own act together at home. My wake-up call came when a preacher said, do you want to know the character of a man? Look into the face of his wife. Whatever he has invested in her or withheld from her will be reflected in her countenance. That preacher went through scripture showing me God has mandated that every man draw his wife to splendor in Jesus Christ. And I looked at Lindy, and instead of splendor, I saw pain. And I knew then, for the sake of our marriage and the testimony of Jesus Christ in my life, that I had to choose, that I had to choose. I resigned from football coach at the University of Colorado to devote myself to Lindy. I wanted to do my part as a husband so God could bring Lindy back to her glory 
and I have not regretted it. It's Bill McCartney, founder of Promise Keepers. So for the personal challenge, look at your, your wife's face and does it reflect your love? And then pray to love your wife as Christ loved the church. The thought to apply is the face is the mirror of the mind and the eyes without speaking confess the secrets of the heart. And that was from Jerome, a Bible translator in the fourth century. So um, if you guys want to share um, you know, just a, a couple of minutes, what, what, what do you see when you look into your wife's face? Does it reflect your love for her? Well, I, I would concur with all of that, James. I mean, it's, it's very true. But I, you know, it's like when I look, when I look at Kim's face, it's like looking, depends when you do that. Like, how often do I not stop and look at like where she's at? Not necessarily in the moment of something, but just generally like, oh, hey, and just looking and seeing what, where she kind of is, what, what her expression is, you know? She could be sitting in the backyard on the swing or something and just looking. Oh, I wonder what's, you know, <laughs> what's going on? Um, it's the influence that we, we have or how, how we're treating her, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know I'm looking at my wife, my wife's face and I've caused a lot of pain over the years and um, she's been gracious to stay with me and to um, be such a good wife um, it just amazes me the kind of the good person that she is um, and and um, you know there's certainly times when I see uh, love in her but a lot of times I think it's She's she's trying to do too much, as I'm trying to do too much, and maybe I'm not caring for the things that concern her quite as much as I should. Um, and that's what I see a lot of times is um, the worry and tiredness these days. And she worked all those years, um, you know, raising our children and taking care of our, our children and. It turned out so wonderfully, and um, in my humble opinion, uh, we'll see what God has to say, I guess. But, um, it wasn't because of me. It was definitely because of her. Um, anything else on um, reading my wife's face? All right. Um, if you guys, if you guys want to read those, um, we can just leave it for. Um, if you want to read them, that would be great. Somebody have First Peter, three seven. Oh. All right. Well, let's just move on to the next uh, next day here. So the next, uh, on, on Tuesday, it was the power of listening. Key Bible verse is James 1.19. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Uh, <clears throat> and in the text of the devotional, not long ago, my wife, Norma, I went and I went on a short trip with our good friends, the Brawners. In the driveway before we left, Suzette said to Jim, I feel so nervous about leaving Travis, their 17-year-old, home alone for the first week of a two-day football practice. Who's going to make his breakfast? Who's going to have his sandwiches ready? Isn't Travis going to feel he's been abandoned? And without thinking, Jim said, come on, Suzette, will you relax? We've got, to, we've got to take vacations once in a while. Let the kids grow up. 
Then he realized what he was doing and he stopped attacking his wife's feelings. He hugged her and said, I see you're really hurting and that's okay. Should we cancel the trip? No, I want to go. It's just hard, she said. We, we men need to understand that in healthy homes, everyone feels free to express feelings without fear of hearing. That's stupid. Only an idiot would feel like that. Or why don't you grow up? Maybe the feelings are immature, but they're real nonetheless. It's not our job to analyze. analyze. It is our duty to love, value, and understand our families. And that was by uh, Gary Smalley, co-author of The Love Language, The Language of Love. So um, for personal challenge, ask a family member, how was your day? And listen well. And thank God that he listens. So thought to apply, he who can no longer listen to his brother will soon no longer be listening to God either. From Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a pastor martyred by Hitler's regime. Any thoughts there um, on the power of listening? Sounds like Tim has been listening well. Or his son is following a, his father's example. And some um, the bonus reading was uh, Proverbs seventeen. 27 and 28. So if somebody wants to look that up and re read that for us, that'd be great. I, I'm, um, if you guys would like to go on to, if you have your computer and it's handy, if you'd like to go on to um, archive.org and look this up, um, I think it, I think going, I, I think going through this might be, um, Maybe we'll pick two or three and go through them each week and um, let you guys, I'll give you guys the titles and you can tell me which other ones you want. They go basically Monday through Saturday. And then on Saturday, there's a few more questions. And on Sunday, there's, there's uh, questions for, um, you know, sort of wrapping up the week, relaxing. There's no real devotional on Sunday. But um, let me just go through and I'll read the, the titles and the verses and you guys can let me know if you think uh, one of those we should dig into more. So on Wednesday, it was about me and my big mouth. The key Bible verse, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20 verse 12. The extra reading is, is, is in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, and uh, Colossians 3, 20. Um, this, the thought behind this one, um, let's see, let me read, let me read the personal challenge just in case there's a good question there you guys want to talk about think about your relationship with your parents in what ways do you show honor and respect in what ways might you have to improve and then secondly ask god to show you practical ways to show honor to your parents the thought is reverence for parents stands written among the three laws of most revered righteousness. And I can't pronounce this name, Aschilas, an ancient Greek playwright. Uh, Thursday was, I'm so sorry. Bible verse is James 5, 16. 
confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And the bonus readings are Psalm 51, 1 through 12, and Proverbs 28, 13. Do you have a confession to make to a family member? Pray that God will help you to honestly share your struggles. Thought mm -hmm. to apply, we need not sin that grace may abound. We are sinners and that grace may abound. C. Fitzsimmons Allison, a Christian leader. Then Friday, um, the ultimate protection plan. I think I'll read this one fully. Um, key Bible verse is 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 through 18. And the bonus reading is John 17, 6 through 19. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 18. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Without a doubt, the most important protection we can offer our wives and children is in our prayers. That may sound like something right out of a sermon, but it's true. In fact, surveys illustrate the power of prayer. We've all seen the alarming statistics for the divorce rate in the United States. And sadly, the rate isn't much different for people who say they are evangelical Christians. But a Gallup poll also revealed that amazing, uh, revealed an amazing stat. For couples who pray together every night, the divorce rate is an incredible one in 1,052. I mention this not because God's word needs independent verification, but because it amazes me how science always eventually catches up to the scriptures. The way Jesus prayed for protection for his followers gives a model for how we can put a spiritual hedge around ourselves and our families. God may still allow us to encounter times of severe testing, but he remains faithful to us and our families when we are committed to prayer. And that's John Trent, um, frequent speaker at Promise Keepers conferences in the late 90s and uh, president of Encouraging Words Ministry. Personal challenges, what, what family needs can you consistently pray for? And secondly, ask God to help you faithfully pray for your family. And the thought uh, to apply is a man prayed, and at first he thought that prayer was talking, but he became more and more quiet. In the end, he realized that prayer is listening. Soren Kierkegaard, theologian of the 19th century. Mm. So, what family needs can you consistently pray for? Um, Tim brought up a couple. Um, anybody else have any family prayer needs? Rich, I don't know if you're, if you're at work and can't come online or can't come off mute. Uh, we understand that, but be, please feel free to, to jump in and uh, mainly so I don't have to, so I don't do all the talking, but um, Rick and Tim also, you know, just chime in if you have anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Saturday for week one, um, the Up Close and Personal with Rod Cooper. What do wives want? What do wives want? The question is, what do wives want from their husbands? And the answer from this um, pastor, 
Ron Cooper, I believe he, he's a pastor. Um, I've counseled hundreds of men and, and their wives, and the wife raises the same lament over and over. Why won't he let me into his life? Why won't he share with me? Why can't we have the intimacy that I long to have in this relationship? But that can be scary. I confess that I found this to be true in my own life as well. I've been married for 14 years. And I have a wonderful wife who loves me beyond words. But whenever we get close, you know what I mean, a soul closeness. I get nervous and scared and want to pull away. It's as if this wall goes up in me and alarms go off. Red alert, red alert. My God's grace, by God's grace and the patience of my wife, I've been slowly tearing down the bricks of the, in the wall and have started to come out of hiding. But it's not been easy. Um, give us an example. I remember coming back from a trip at, for, for Promise Keepers. I'd given my message and Rod Cooper was also a pretty frequent um, speaker at Promise Keepers conferences back in the day. And God had blessed the time. I couldn't wait to tell Nancy about how well it had gone, but that meant also telling her how scared I'd been. When I walked in the door, Nancy hugged me and asked me those four key words. How did it go? I then responded with my one word, my one key word, fine. Inside, it seemed a wall had gone up. I, for some irrational reason, felt that if I told Nancy about my fears, I would be judged for not trusting God enough and consequently be abandoned for not being a good spiritual leader. Nancy did continue to ask me, and finally I told her about my fear. She only affirmed me and told me how, how much faith it took to get in front of all those men and be God's spokesman. Nancy didn't abandon me. She blessed me. When men miss tremendous blessings, we men miss tremendous blessings from those around us due to our belief that if we share our inadequacies, we'll be abandoned. In fact, by being silent, we end up being abandoned, which is the very thing we fear. So Dr. Rodney L. Cooper is director of Robert B. Pamplin Institute for Leadership, Education, Development, and Research at Western Seminary in Portland, Oregon. Okay. Are you guys still with me there? Yes, we're here. Okay. Uh, so this is Sunday for personal study or group discussion. Uh, real life application. Key Bible verse uh, is Ephesians 4, verse 32. And bonus reading is uh, Ephesians 4, 25 through 31. So let's let's read Ephesians 4, 25 through 32. Um, if somebody can look that up, since it's like all contiguous there, uh, and read that for us, I appreciate it. Um, and then think and pray about uh, these other sentence starters that we'll go through. To me, a good, a, a good family is blank. Uh, secondly, as I've been thinking about my family this week, I've realized blank. And then thirdly, one way I, I'd like God to help me and my family is blank. And so let's talk about those after we read Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through 32. Therefore, 
putting away the lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole, stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for reading God's word. Um, can you read uh, verse 32 one more time? And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Okay, so so based on based on what we just heard, um, let's think and pray about these sentence starters. Um, to me, a good family is blank. Anybody have any fill in the blanks for that one? Supportive. Supportive. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's helpful to us as men, as men, right? Uh, supportive to one another, right? Even encouraging one another, as it says in Scripture. All right, James. So everybody's going to be going through something, <laughs> you know. And a lot of times, it's so hard to get our own blinders off and see where somebody else really is, you know. Yeah. Well, as I've been thinking about my family this week, I've realized, what have you realized about your family? You think about it through the week. We all need each other in my family. I'm not, I, I feel like that. Um, even in my extended family, not just in my immediate family, but we've been here in Ohio for a little over a week. And, you know, Even, you know, even brothers and sisters that we don't live with, um, they really need and appreciate whatever support you can give them, whatever. Um, and, and sometimes some need more than others. So. One way I'd like God to help me and my family is what? What blank? What can you fill in the blank? Well, how about this? Um, let's uh, let's let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we we may we we may have time for some of the week two. Uh, devotionals, but um, you know, I, I'd appreciate it if you guys can uh, go 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 into archive.org and uh, look at these. If you can't get into the app, when you can get into the app, hopefully you'll be able to. It'll be stable enough that you can actually read the um, the, the daily inputs. I'm going to continue to put these in daily as as uh, best as I can. Sometimes I have to catch up and put two in. Um, 
at a time. It seems like what happened this week. But um, but let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'll I'll pray, and if you guys have something that you want to pray about um, along the way, then um, let me know. Let's see. I do have a chat uh, from Rich. I don't have anything. Just enjoying the encouraging words. So thank you, Rich. Um, and thank you for for being here and for um, putting that in the chat. We uh, we hope we hope that these will be useful to to others uh, as they watch them back as well. But let's go to the Lord in prayer, Heavenly Father. Again, we come to you as your humble servants. Lord, I want to be a good family member. I want to um, be able to see in my wife's face how much she loves you and therefore she knows how much I love her because you first loved the both of us. As I think about my family this week, Lord, I've realized that each one is hurting in different ways. Each one has their own special needs or their own um unique needs, Lord, that um, sometimes only you can fill, but sometimes you can, you will fill those needs with or through us. And Lord, I just uh, pray that you will use us as men, as spiritual leaders in our families, uh, Lord, to uh, to fulfill those needs that, we're, that you want, you that you desire for us to see even lord sometimes and to fill and to um encourage our family members uh, and continue to pray for them and, and lift them up because we can't do it all but you can't lord and uh, lord just turning certain issues over to you are is important uh, knowing that you're capable and that you are uh, a loving God, you're a healing God, you're a uh, provider God. Um, and let me just thank you that uh, in our family, in the family that I'm a part of uh, directly um, through marriage as well as through blood, um, uh, that for the most part, people are pretty healthy and um, they're blessed to know you. Uh, that we get to talk about you um, often. And Lord, I lift up my brother, Will, who is having neck issues, uh, debilitating neck issues. And uh, we're supposed to take a work trip this week. Probably won't be able to do that due to uh, those issues being so painful. So. Lord, I just ask that your healing touch be upon him and, uh, and my mother who's living with him for right now. And that we can work out um, living arrangements uh, for for mom so that, you know, she feels comfortable um, sometimes, you know, in, in, in our home, Terry and I's home, and, um, as she's getting comfortable in Will's and Gina's home and uh, Lord, I just uh, thank you for the opportunities to to help, for, for 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 to ask for your help, and to know that you are there to provide always and forever into life and eternity. We have hope in you and through you. And so much hope, Lord, that we can share that with those around us, even outside of our family. So, Lord, I just I, I turn all these things over to you, your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. And ask for others uh, who might be willing to to pray for their families. Here aloud or if if not allowed, Lord, I just. Thank you that they're praying in their hearts and their minds and their souls and they're giving them to you.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are a loving God. You never give up on us. Uh, you're continually searching our us out. We have uh, many wrongs in our life, and uh, Lord, I give those wrongs to you, Lord, myself. Lord, and let me be a, a more understanding husband and father, Lord. Lord, my uh, five children are grown, and they were all raised in the word. And your uh, says in your word that it will not return void. And uh, that promise is coming, coming to pass. Thank you, God, that my oldest son is actually in the word and reaching out to you and uh, searching. And, uh, Lord, and I uh, thank you for my daughter. My, that she is also searching you, looking looking for answers. Lord, and the other three, Lord, you know the prayers that we have on our closet wall for all through all five of our children. Uh, we pray that I pray that they uh, come to pass in your timing, God. We never thought these two would even come. But uh, we kept praying and believing. And you, you are a faithful God. Thank you, God, for this time in your word this morning. Lord, and I ask you to bless James, Lord, and the uh, struggles he's got to get us to talk. <laughs> and and uh, Lord, I just uh, pray for the others that will see this this week, Lord, and let them be honest with their families. Give us, I give this time to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift all these things up to you, in your precious and holy spirit. Amen. All right. Um, we'll just start into week two. We'll talk about uh, what's the theme for week two? Um, honoring Christ. This is hmm. promise one. Uh, the family is promise four, by the way. Um, I probably should. I probably should still know these by heart, but um, I know. I know the. I know the the general um, promise focus um, still by heart, and I pray those. Um, I pray those continually, but uh, the words of the promises, I've probably, um, they've been changed a couple times um, in this new era, so anymore, I have to go, basically go to the, to the website <laughs> and read them. Um, let me do that. So let me read Promise 4 first. Um, sorry. So Promise 4 is a promise keeper is committed to building strong marriages and families through love, protection, and biblical values. And then as we start into week two, promise one is a promise keeper is committed 
to honoring Jesus Christ through worship, prayer, and obedience to God's word in the power of the Holy Spirit. So week two, uh, the theme is honoring Christ and um, the titles. Uh, I'll just go through the titles and the key verses and leave um, the rest for you guys to um, go through those this week. Um, we'll go through those in the first part of the week, a couple at a, a day, maybe five should only still only take about five minutes or 10 even to meditate on the scripture and to think, think about them. But um, maybe we'll, hopefully we'll be able to catch up next week. Um, I'll figure out a way to go through these a little more meaningfully. Um, but I think there's really good, very short stories in here that help us to understand. And especially in this week, honoring Christ. So the, Title for Monday, week two, is Pouring a Foundation. Matthew 7, 24 says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the thought to apply is you become stronger only when you become weaker, when you surrender your will to God. You discover the resources to do what God requires. Erwin Lutzer, pastor and author. That's not who, mm. um, who wrote the devotional. But And then um, for Tuesday, no thanks, playmates. No thanks, comma, playmates. Um, key verse here is Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. 22 and 24 uh, so it has to do with reading that we just did put off all put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires and put on the new self created to be like god in true righteousness and holiness um the thought to apply for this is there is only one way to achieve happiness on this terrestrial ball and that is to have either a clear conscience or none at all ogden nash a poet and humorist wednesday is barefoot before god uh, key verse is exodus um, chapter 3 verses 4 and 5 God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and dot, 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 um, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. It goes through and talks about a few, Jack Hayford talks about a few of the those verses in Exodus. And the thought is that we pay God honor and reverence, not for his sake, because he is of himself full of glory, to which no creature can add anything but for our own sake. That was from Thomas Aquinas, a medieval theologian. Thursday is really big prayer requests. Key Bible verse, James 5.16. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And um, this is by Bishop in, uh, Wellington Boone. Uh, also, he's an author uh, in the Atlanta area. Um, personal challenge. Pray for your area and country today. So thought to apply is as it is the business of tailors sorry, to make clothes and of cobblers to mend shoes so it is the business of Christians to pray. Martin Luther, the former from the 16th century. And Friday is the word on the word. Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might 
be the firstborn among many brothers. Uh, and this is uh, written by um, Pastor Edwin Lewis Cole, who was the founder of Christian Men's Network. Uh, another, most of these guys are frequent speakers at, at Promise Keepers conferences in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, the personal challenge is what Bible passage has helped you become more like Christ? Ask God to use his word to transform your life. And the thought is a Bible that's falling apart probably belongs to someone who isn't. Christian Johnson. And then there's uh, Saturday is an up close and personal uh, with Randy Phillips. And the question is, what is what is what's it mean to be a man who honors Christ? I mean, what what's it mean to be a full time player for God? Randy Phillips, um, he was a former president of Promise Keepers, one of the first. Um, I should say next to the next to the founders um, that he did a great job running Promise Keepers for quite a number of years. A very godly person. Um, for personal study, key Bible verse is Psalm ninety, uh, Psalm nine, verse one. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonders. So think and pray about these sentence starters on your own or discuss them with other men. To me, honoring Christ means blank. And then secondly, some practical ways I have honored Christ include blank. So food for thought. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for, uh, um, you know, any suggestions you guys have will be much appreciated in how to go through and present these um, individual um, devotionals yet with weekly themes. If I can I mean, think of ways that we can present them better, um, have more dialogue uh, versus me just reading them and us trying to go through a question here or there. I would appreciate that. So, um, if you guys are able to go into week three, uh, and like I said, in archive.org, www.archive.org, um, it is the internet archive of books that you can just check out like you're in a library and uh, you can check them out for an hour at a time, I think. And um, it's all free just um, for whatever they have in there. And this particular book uh, is named Men of Integrity, um, a promise, let's see, a promise keeper devotional, Men of Integrity, a daily guide to the Bible and prayer. And it has the old um, promise keepers logo on it. So you'll, you'll know you're in the right place. Just called Men of Integrity, uh, basically. Any other questions, concerns, uh, things to pray about? Um, Rick, I'm going to ask if you'll pray us out um, when the time comes, but first I just want to make sure that um, <clears throat> you're, that uh, if anybody has any other prayer requests, we can lift those up now. Okay, with hearing none, uh, Rick, if you would appreciate if you can pray us into our next week. Father God, thanks for this uh, this time this morning with these guys online here, um, learning more of you. That we that our hearts would be softened, Lord, um, as we as we go through the next week today and through the next week. That would be closer to you in your Word, in your truth, and and as you impress upon our hearts to put these these thoughts into action. And uh, there's always hope in you, Lord. Always hope in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. The next week's theme that I'll be posting for this week is friendship and accountability. Um, I expect that's probably promise uh, to brotherhood, um, but more to come on that. So as we uh, go into our next week, let's go and be the church, be a blessing to those around us, as well as um, look for God's blessings as well. Um, but go and be his church. Amen. Have a great day. Thanks, Jay. See you, Rick. Yep. Thanks, Chris. guys. Yep. See you guys. See you guys next week, I hope. Thanks, Rich. Amen.